dudettes. Uh, we're actually not doing any motor stuff, obviously, by the title. But uh, I want to get started on this rear end. So that's what's going to happen. While I wait, uh, I just had the guy that I'm buying the engine internals off of. Just told him now just to ship them because I was maybe going to do uh, some block work in Colorado. But I found somebody down here that my, my boy Michael uses with the Evo. So I guess that's where I'll be taking the block to get bored out and shit. But uh, so they'll be here. Hopefully next week sometime we can have a nice little video of all that stuff. But anyway, I need to get this rear end started. Um, it's probably going to be maybe three, four videos of just rear end stuff. Um, maybe actually more once you start getting to alignment. So anyway, so what we're going to do, we're going to get the wheels off, get this uh, subframe down, see if we got to disconnect the drive shaft or if we should take the diff out first and then the whole subframe, what arms. Um, well, all the arms got to come off because I got all new arms, toe arms, control arms, uh, what are they called? Trailing arms. And then I got to remove the, the wishbones, like ba um, basically like where the hub is, that area. And uh, there's two bushings on each side that I got solid bushings to replace with. So there's a whole bunch of stuff just when it comes to like the subframe and arms. And then I'm going to pull the bumper and get rid of the crash bar back there. And then the last thing that's going to be happening is the carbon hatch, which come October, early October will be about two months. And it should be here like not long after that. And he said mine was the next one being made and that was like two or three weeks ago. So, um, which is fine because I don't have the glass for it yet anyway. And the people that are building my trans are the ones supplying with, with the Lexan, so it's fine. And then obviously uh, when I get the rear end aligned and we'll be doing weight comparisons and all that along the way, so. Stay tuned for all this rear end stuff and then it might get mixed in between. I might start doing engine stuff in between those videos do like a, um, cause I usually do like Monday and Thursday videos. So do like a Monday rear end, a, a Thursday um, engine video or something. So we're going to try and keep the content rolling here and uh, keep you guys entertained. You guys seem to be loving this shit. So many people keep telling me to swap the transmission to the DQ 500. Guys, it's not happening unless someone's going to donate everything that I need to do that swap, I ain't doing it. There's no way. No. Unless someone's paying me to do it, then. Or donating. That's the only way I'm putting a DSG in this car. Anyway, so I need to get the wheels off the car, and then we'll go from there. Get under there, look around, see what we think uh, is the best route to take when removing all this stuff. Got all over. Figured I'd show you guys the stuff again. Trailing arm. Which, like I said in the last couple of videos, I should have waited for their the new version of this coming out. But when you guys will end up with this when the new one comes out, I'm gonna order that like right away. But uh, I got the control arm. It's so pretty. It's my favorite arm out of the bunch. You got the toe arm here. You got caps for all the uh, spherical stuff. And these are the bushings I'm talking about. Ow. Uh, these are for the wishbone. There's two sets of these. Obviously the subframe. And then the other box has some hardware. And we have a handful of shims. We're going to have to be doing all types of measurements and stuff. So it's going to get interesting. It's probably going to be a little frustrating. But it will all be worth it. And these seats will be gone here very soon. But uh, yeah, and we'll do a weight comparison like I said. And all that jazz. I'm super excited. But this video is just going to be getting this rear end off. And then uh, I might tease you guys with some weights. How about that? All right, guys. So we're under the car here. Got the wheels off. Excuse me. Please excuse me for being an idiot earlier. I don't know what I was saying about those bushings being hub related. I'm dumb. So there's a bushing in here. So I guess there is that one. So you got that bushing right there. And then the bushing on the end of this up in there. Those are the two bushings that will be getting replaced. It's in that little box. And this is the only stock arm I'm keeping. Eventually, once I get rich, I'll go to a true coilover setup where the spring isn't on this arm at all. It's actually on the, the shock. But we'll get there. Anyway, so you see this is like a stamp steel, ugly subframe. Like that whole tubular thing I just showed you is going to replace that whole... Bigger part, and I'll have um, those for sale as well. I forgot I had those. But uh, so, okay, yeah, the subframe exhaust has definitely got to come off. And then uh, this is the toe arm. So that's that real 
one of the nicer arms I have, nice and thick. And then you got the uh, this arm right here. This is the control arm. This is the one that's like real curved. Let me show you from the top, kind of. You see the? I can't even see the camera. And this arm right here, the bolt it goes over. So like all the bushings back here, this will be a spherical bushing. This will be solid. That one will be solid. Um, there won't be any bushings in the subframe at all. You can kind of see like the bushing in there. And I have these bushing inserts to help uh, keep the rear end still. But no, I won't have any bushings at all. They'll all be gone. So this doesn't really seem too bad. Get the exhaust off. Uh, get the springs out and the, the shocks off. At least unmounted. Get that bolt out. Um, what's going to hold this up here? Oh, yeah, we got to worry about axles and shit, too. Hmm. Yeah, this will be interesting. All right, guys, after further inspection, so that rubber bushing towards the middle top of the screen there, that is the back of the diff, and it mounts to the top side of the subframe. The subframe is this, is this here. So it mounts to the top. There's a bolt that goes... You're gonna have to remove this arm to get to that bolt. And you can see over here, this, the way the subframe's made, um, now it attaches on the top side of the, the diff. See the diff is resting on the subframe there and it's supporting it here. So the whole subframe, the, the diff can't, well, it'd be very difficult to take the diff out, I think, without dropping the subframe. So I think I might just leave everything attached to it, basically. There's a sway bar is attached to it. Um, looks like the level sensor is attached to it. It is. And I believe there's like a little bracket thing that came on with the subframe for that, which is really neat. And I also noticed where they welded the exhaust hanger on the new subframe. So that was also very neat of them. Um, but yeah, so I think only things I really need to disconnect. I'm going to have to take off the brake calipers on both sides, hang those, disconnect the tops of the struts up there um, and move these freaking jack stands because it's literally subframe is supporting it so gotta figure out where I'm gonna move those I gotta move drop the exhaust disconnect the drive shaft the axles and everything will come down with it all of this will so it'll just be interesting on uh, two jacks but We'll do it. So just for now, we get to taking the fender liners out on both sides, and uh, that way we can get to the bolts, to the struts, and hopefully have a place where we can hang the brake caliper up here somewhere. I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna toss all this stuff. So many, so many things, not enough space in the shop. So working here in the back end, you got a 13 mil here on your EVAP canister thing. I'm gonna blast that off real quick. I actually had to go back and look at some of my old videos to see how to, man, my damn thing just messed all up. Just to see how to do that. Kind of funny, I had to go back and watch my own to get it done. Anyway, it says in my video here to lift up and just pull on it. So. There we go. Just zap these bad boys out. Probably help if I that's on there the right way. That back we're not ten mil. It's kinda crazy sometimes. I'm laying here under the car getting this all these damn 
sensors off the everything related to the brakes and stuff up here and I'm I think I'm like damn like really this this is what I do for fun I get off for work I'm working on planes all day I come home and now I'm very anxious like I'm excited and I'm like super nervous of doing this whole job like I've take like uh, my girls M3 we pulled the rear end in her car twice and because uh, we had like weld up where the subframe meets the frame because the E46s are known for cracking subframes and hers was really bad but I'm glad I got that experience so that is going to come in real handy here like I didn't take her diff out of the subframe or anything but at least getting the rear end out um, which is just neat this whole thing is neat Another, like I read through that whole instruction manual I'll throw some pictures up here of how like in depth they go but it tells you like if you have this much camber in the rear you should use this much toe and then adjust your bump steer to match that and just like all the thought that they put into this subframe and stuff it's pretty crazy because there's different mounting points for the control arm based on if you're doing track stuff or drag stuff and then there's uh, an additional brace I got on the subframe that's it says not to use it for drag racing but I mean I probably will be because I mean it's only a couple bolts it's only a couple pounds as well, but either way, it's really neat. They have like different settings for different options and different people, different styles of racing. And it's a really neat product. I'm super excited. I'm about to rip this exhaust off real quick. And then uh, tomorrow, I'll pretty much only got to do pull the brakes off and drop it, I think, and the drive shaft. But uh, this is neat. I'm nervous. Once that rear ends out, we're in the process of swapping everything over to the new one, I'm going to pull the rear bumper off and get that um, crash bar out. So I'm going to have to make a video in the middle of this video. And, uh, I'm really excited for that hatch to come in. Anyway, back to work. So I went through up here, disconnected my DCC cancelers, a brake pad wear sensor, and then the, sen or the power for the electric brake. I did the same thing on the other side. Um, there's just a couple bolts. There's one right here and one on the other side and then I actually have to take off the hanger on this one so I sprayed that up with some WD-40 hopefully it pops right out but then it's just like a 19 here and then with those two in the back the whole this whole section from here back should drop out go grab a, a jack get that under the the muffler here and uh, get to it not sure how well recording this is gonna go but Guys, it really seems together. bag is off here it's actually a little heavier than what I thought it would be for being a, oh like all the ink just comes right off <laughs> anyway I feel like someone's gonna say well why don't you delete this then if you're trying to save all that weight I probably should this thing is is beefy I probably save quite a bit of weight getting rid of that is putting a straight pipe but that doesn't sound like absolute ass I think I mean eventually it probably will but uh for now, that's what we got. And that's easy, that is so easy to swap. Three bolts, comes right off, two connectors. I could just have a straight bike piece I could swap in. Eventually I'd like to have like a center exit exhaust and like a real diffuser and real big wing. We'll get there. Wide fenders, boo. Anyway, until tomorrow. All right, so we're back the next day here. Exhaust is off. Out of the way, struts are off, the lines for all the electrical connectors are off. I moved the jack stands around because I had the jack stands on the subframe. I did that off camera. And now I'm about to uh, take off 
with brake calipers and uh, get a zip tie up in a wheel well somewhere and hang the calipers. Um, then this side will be, well, mostly done. I gotta do trailing arms after that on each side, which I think is three bolts per. And then after that, the drive shaft. And after that, should just be the subframe bolts. So um, I'll shove the camera in here, show you guys where these two bolts are, take those out real quick. And you see the one the wrench is on, you gotta match them one up here. I believe they are M16s, triple square. And they're on there tight. And they're supposed to be one time use along with a lot of stuff like the axle bolts, draft shaft bolts, subframe bolts. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the trailing arm bolts as well. I hit up Shop Dap this morning and asked them if they could get me pretty much everything that I need. I need all the gaskets and stuff for that thing, all the gaskets, bolts, main bearings, rod bearings. I want new injectors, new water pump, and uh, what else? A couple other random things. Timing chain kit, and uh, they're gonna get that all together for me. A whole list of uh, nuts and bolts for the chassis in general, for the whole rear end, um, axle stuff, draft shaft stuff. They're gonna, shop that's gonna get everything together for me. Um, and I'm just gonna hit send, basically. So it's super dope of them that they can just Gather up all the part numbers real quick and then boom, place an order. So, huge shout out to Paul and the guys that were chopped up, hooking it up. But, uh, yeah, if you're doing any of this stuff, just make sure you're replacing stuff. I, I did reuse axle bolts before and they did get loose. So, well, not like the axle, axle bolts, like this main, this main bolt here in the center. Which, I'm gonna need new ones of those too. I'm gonna get like everything. So, anyway. Yeah, I just got the, uh, Grab some of these hooks that I had bought from Arbor Freight. I just stick there, zip tie, right on the brake. Everything's out of the way there. Perfect. Dope idea. I like myself sometimes. Boy, does it get bright in this garage. Uh, next up, trailing arms. Got, uh, if it'll ever. There's like four bolts there. One, two. Where are we? I can't even see. There you go. Those four there. Pop those out on each side. And, uh, yeah, everything's coming out really easy. I'm just nervous because I'm the only one here. My roommate's busy. I got no one to help. So I'm about to, like, work both jacks to get this subframe down. And then somehow slide them both out from under the car at the same time. I don't know. It's going to get interesting. <laughs> Real simple stuff here, guys. Break them loose. Nice breaker bar here. And... Throw it on the impact, get them out of the way. Tell you what guys, I, I am still pretty nervous. Doing this all is, is pretty crazy. And I, I realized I didn't get diff bushings. I gotta order diff bushings. And then all the hardware I'm getting from Shop Dap. So it's gonna be a little bit till all this goes back on, sadly. I was hoping just to swap it in and out. <laughs> but hopefully about this time next week, everything will good here. Zoom this stuff right back in. Good thing I'm way ahead on videos. That's about as far down as going to go for now. All right, so this one took a minute to figure out how to do since, you know, the other end of the drive shaft, um, that way is disconnected. Like there's nothing to hold it still. So I wound up taking this flathead, putting it through there, and I can use that as leverage to keep the whole thing from turning whenever you're trying to loosen these bolts. Super pain in the ass. It took me like 10 minutes of laying here until I realized that you could actually like go through this like there's some spots where it just goes all the way through and I actually plan on replacing uh, they call these like weebos or some shit um, I'm gonna replace the front and rear ones so what is so actually take a look at this um, I don't think that is supposed to do that let's see how yeah look at that 
So yeah, definitely glad I got under here and started poking around because that was going to go bad soon. Who knows what kind of crap we would have had to deal with. I promise I did not lay it like this. I knocked it over on Lux and it, and it fell like this. I had to show you guys. That's crazy. All right, guys. Got the drive shaft off. Kind of hanging here. I disconnected the level sensor there that goes on this nub. And then there's an electrical connector for it. Right here on the Haldex box. See it from this way. There's two connectors that go. They're on the top of this on the other side. This is one of them. It's a big plug. It's very annoying. Um, that was like super duper annoying to mess with. And then there's this plug. You got brake lines that run across the top here. And they there's like brackets that hold it to the subframe on both sides. And then um, obviously this bolt, that bolt, and then the ones mirroring on the other side. That's Those four are the only things holding that in. As I'm lowering it, I'm going to have to take off those brake lines. And with the Verkline subframe, it comes with brackets for that to install. And then I believe you bring this bracket over, but it has like all the provisions for everything. Like, it's super dope, super duper dope. I can't wait to like actually compare them side by side on the ground. But I think I'm gonna put a jack right here in this area and a jack right here. Um, I was thinking about putting it on the, whatever these are called, wishbones, but with the spring being there and all that and a lot of it's top heavy I didn't want it to like just fall backwards so I figured if I put it where most of the weight is which is here in the center um, yeah I think that'll work I'll be able to get it just low enough hopefully these don't drag too much or the rotors are sitting too far we'll see but just enough to get it out from under the car and I'll be happy uh. I can't believe I just did that for that camera angle. The pain in my ass. At least I got room, right? Be thankful for that. getting my phone camera and this camera set up got the jack set up the way I think that this might work um, we'll find out here in a moment let the brake before loose I'm gonna lower them down ever so slightly and then uh, I guess I lower them down I'm gonna get the brake lines or whatever wires that are on top of this subframe and make sure they're disconnected before we lower it as far as we can so I had a real long it's my phone here. Extension and I guess I really didn't need it this long for the back. This breaker bar. Oh, I should probably go proper direction, huh? So guys, I got the subframe lowered ever so slightly. Uh, you can see it's about that much. Boom. Now, up in here, you can... I don't know if the camera will get it. Kind of back there, you can see where there's a clip. And there's another clip further up the line there. Up there. They're plastic. So, And these are hard lines. So I think the hard lines would break the plastic, if anything. But it's not going to be that hard to pop them on out. So I just want to show you guys that. But I'm just going... I got to do, do the back, too bolts lower it down a little bit and then I'll go to the front to um, do the same thing I'm just going back and forth just easing it out little by little and then once I get enough room to pop those lines off on each side know that I'm good then I'll uh, pretty much just pull the bolts and drop it down it seems pretty stable so we'll see all right after realizing I actually did have to take the brake lines off because the bracket for the hard line is actually attached to the subframe. I'll show you later, but just got low enough to take these 
back too down. I can fit my finger up there now. I'm about to take the bolts out of the front and just start lowering them down little by little. There's still one hard line clip that I can't reach like somewhere up back here. I, there's nothing I can get to reach to it. So I'm about to lower it down until I can. Pop it off that and we'll be good to go. Oh boy. All right guys, it's getting late. Uh, what I'm having to use my phone camera here since my camera camera died and I'm so nasty and grimy, I do not want to touch anything in my house. But this thing is almost out. Um, it's been a real back and forth time here. You can kind of see everything going on up top. Uh, there's disconnect there and there's your springs and all that shit. You can kind of see that hard line and where it, it's sitting now. There's part of it. That clip, that clip. There's another clip over there and then two more clips you can't see on this side. Very annoying. Very, very annoying. That's probably the most annoying things out of this whole process other than like trying to get the drive shaft over the, you know, like the keyway for it in the diff while lowering the diff. Anyway, this is what you're looking at. See like the diff mounts on top of the subframe in the back and then on the front, the subframe supports the front side of the diff. So, and these are the bushings that I need to replace. It'll be the only bushings I have in the rear end are right there. <laughs> no one makes solid ones. Anyway. All right, drop this bad boy to the ground. Oh god. Alright. Hopefully that's low enough on this side. You gotta pull this baby out. Having a quiet garage during this is key so you can hear if anything's like catching on anything or anything like that. Wow, this looks so cool. I can't believe I'm actually doing this. I've talked about it for so long and it's giving me so much anxiety. Crazy. You guys have a look here. Sorry if the quality is like crap. My phone doesn't like to connect to my computer right so I have to like let Google Photos upload these videos and then download it from Google Photos on my computer. I don't know why. My computer doesn't read my phone as a storage device. I have the drivers installed and everything. It used to work. Same port, same computer. No, it doesn't anymore. I don't know. So I can't like transfer videos directly off the phone. But anyway, you see what you're looking at. Pretty neat, I think. Get a little closer in there for you. It's going to look so cool with the new stuff and it's all cleaned up. Yo, so left off last night just getting this bad boy on the ground. Um, but I can't pull it out because the struts are still attached. I don't know what I was thinking. I could have just left the struts, struts attached up there. Then I wouldn't have a, well, I could have hung a brake caliper on there. Either way, it's got to come off the uh, wishbone so I can pull it out from under the car. And uh, then it'll be out and we can take a look at it. All right, boys and girls. Got the struts out, nice and dirty. I'm gonna have to clean it. I'm gonna spend so much time just cleaning everything. Oh boy, I can't wait. Anyway, now the struts out of the way, you can see I should be able to get it out. I'm gonna have to lower the back a little bit more just to get these um, nubs to like clear unless I can get it just through like one of the exhaust ports or like with the way that the jack is, I was thinking maybe like rotate this whole thing or go out and turn it like as it goes out. We'll see how this works. All right, we're gonna try and get this thing out. Oh boy, okay. I'm rotating. <laughs> oh shit. Here, just 
if you don't have an issue with lifting this, we can both lift this up. Oh, she's just almost the ice one. I was saying that so we can really pressure up with it. Lift it up again. Holy shit. I right don't. How did I know that was one? <laughs> All right. So with the help of Eric, thank you Eric if you're watching, you know, we got her pushed out. This is pretty dope. Looking at everything, it might look a little complicated. Like doing the hubs and stuff is not going to be fun because there's bushings I got to mess with in there. But really overall, just swapping everything over isn't going to be that bad. Like uh, this arm doesn't go, this arm doesn't go, this arm doesn't go, that arm doesn't go. It's just like... This stuff here on the end, the axle, the diff, and then the same stuff on the other side. And then the springs and this wishbone also go over to the new one. Eventually, eventually, I'll get a real, like a true coilover design where the spring is on the strut in the back. And then I can just get like some type of regular bar that goes there and not have this big chunky ugly piece. Oh uh, yeah. can't believe my car is in this many pieces. I literally, I have my rear end sitting next to my motor. This is crazy. My whole car is like empty. There's like, you can't even sit in the damn thing. She's got a breast and oh. implants and uh, what? Implants. Yeah, she's getting all the shit. All the damn money, that's for sure. Man, crazy. In my own garage. Huh. Who would have thought?